All attendees are in listen only mode. Um, hello everyone, this is Abhishek from the Bangalore, uh, Study Metro Bangalore and sorry for half an hour delayed. Uh, there was some the technical difficulties we had uh, with the Megan computer and um, so finally we fixed up and now she's available, you can see her and um, uh, sorry for delay and the second thing is that uh, Whatever the questions you have, feel free to ask directly to her or you can um, you can write it down in the chat box window. And um, uh, yeah, we are ready to go. Megan, you can start from there. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for your patience. My computer needed to be restarted. Um, so even though I can't see all of you, um, I'm glad to be able to introduce myself. Um, so I'm the Director of International Recruitment and Admissions at Montana State University and I've been working there for one year now and it's been a, a wonderful experience helping international students come to MSU. Um, so that's been a really wonderful aspect of my job. Um, you can't see him, but I do have another colleague who's on the line. His name is David Carlisle, and he's our International Admissions Coordinator. So he helps to process applications, he works with the counselors, and then also he is the person doing most of the traveling for us. Um, so I will go ahead and get started here. Let's see. All right. I'm hoping everyone can see my screen okay. <laughs> so MSU is located in Bozeman, Montana, and this is a photo of our greater area. Um, so campus and the city is located behind that logo. And to give you an idea of who the team is that you'll be getting to know and working with, um, th this is it. So on the left side of the screen is Dr. David DiMaria. He is our um, Associate Provost for International Programs. So he is in charge of all things international at our university. And then there's me. Uh, David is on the far right. And then also on our team is Yujin Wong. She's our International Credential Evaluator. So one thing that's special about MSU is that we don't require students to send their transcripts out for evaluation. We are able to do that in-house. So what Eugen does is she takes a look at the transcripts. She's able to convert all of the grade points and marks onto the U.S. scale to help our professors and faculty members in making up admissions decisions. And then the two individuals on the bottom are our two student workers. Uh, Sarab is from Mumbai and he works in our office helping students with the application process. Um, students get to know him very well. He answers their questions and he also does a good job of welcoming the students once they arrive. And then Hanan is our graduate assistant who helps with a lot of our technology, so we could have used her tonight. <laughs> and then also with processing applications and helping making sure our students are aware of what they still need to do. So this is our team, our admissions and recruitment team, but we do have a 20 person staff at MSU of international student advisors, people who can help students study abroad, um, immigration specialists, so we make sure that students have everyone they need. So Bozeman was recently ranked the number one place to live in the United States by the New York Post this past September. So we were all very excited that the rest of this, the country and the rest of the world is beginning to learn about how wonderful Bozeman is. So all of these lines that you're seeing on our screen are direct flights out of Bozeman, so nonstop flights. It's very easy to get all around the United States, even though we are in a more remote location. So many students will visit these other cities for holiday weekends and even doing internships during the um, school breaks. Uh, we're also known for a lot of oops, different reasons. So um, we're known for our nature. It is a very beautiful location. We're only 1.5 hours drive from Yellowstone National Park, which is one of the biggest tourist attractions in the United States. Um, that being said, we do bring in a lot of tourists to Bozeman. So many different celebrities will come and um, live in Bozeman, vacation in Bozeman, 
For example, Ted Turner, who's the founder of CNN, the news source, he lives in Bozeman and has a restaurant here. So it's very common to see celebrities. Um, but it also has a wonderful small town feel. Um, all of the resources that a big city has to offer, but also with the comfort and the safety and the, the warmth of a small town. So these are just some photos of the surrounding area. As I've mentioned, it's really nice because you do have those balances of big city life and then small city life, but also you get the benefits of being in both an urban and a rural area. So you can see some of these photos around campus with the mountains, people are out hiking, but then we also have an active downtown. Um, the photo on the bottom left that you're seeing is from a festival that takes place every summer. So every Thursday night in the summertime, the city shuts down and it's called Music on Main Street. So it's there's food being sold, there's musical performances, it's a great way for everyone in the city to come together. So when you're looking at some of the things MSU is most known for and what our, you know, what your students would be most interested in, I wanted to give you some of those ideas. So first of all, we're known for our innovation. Um, we're known as the number one state in the nation for startup business activity every year since 2012. Uh, we have the highest concentration of nonprofits in the United States. So students are able to volunteer with them, to work with them potentially for internships. And we were also ranked the 26th most technologically advanced university in the world as well. So when students are coming to MSU, they're able to get really strong research experience that's hands-on. Um, they're firsthand learning everything. In fact, one of the things that we're most excited about is our physics department has a connection with NASA. So MSU students have actually worked on satellites that have been launched into outer space. Uh, we do have another faculty member in physics as well who they're thinking that he might, um, he's a contender for the Nobel Prize this year. He's working on gravitational waves. So lots of exciting developments um, relating to innovation and research. Um, these would be all of our different research centers on campus, just to name some of them, we do have more. But we're studying everything from, you know, manufacturing to transportation over to biofilm engineering. We even have a sub-zero science facility. So students are able to go into this um, sub-zero facility and learn about what happens when the temperatures go so low, um, which is very interesting. We also have an avalanche laboratory um, on our campus as well, which is perfect because we do have many mountains around us where students can get outside and learn firsthand. So our research isn't just in the laboratory, though. We have experiences where students are out in the fields, they're working in our many greenhouses, they're working on computers. Um, what's nice is that we're not known for just one type of research. It really is spread out across all of our different colleges. Uh, one of the best parts is that every student is required to complete a research project or a creative project prior to graduating. So that means whether you're an art major or whether you're bioengineering, you're going to leave MSU not only completing a research or creative project, but working with a faculty member to get to know them, have them be a connection and a mentor. We're also known for having some very influential alumni. The gentleman on the left, Dr. Maurice Hilleman, he was the inventor of eight different life-saving vaccines. So we always are proud to say that the gentleman who has probably saved more lives than anyone in the world came from Montana State University. And then on the more artistic side, uh, Philip Barbeau, he directed a film called Unbranded. He actually worked with an MSU professor to create this movie, and it has won several different film festivals um, for documentaries. It looked at um, a group of wild horses and their migration from the border of Mexico up to the border of Canada. And then uh, Jake Jabs is the um, CEO and president of American Furniture Warehouse, and he recently donated $25 million to Montana State University's College of Business. Um, half of the money went to building a brand new facility, 
and the other half of the money was given to students to have scholarships to help fund their studies. So not only do we have alumni who are doing great things, but they're also giving back and staying connected to the university. So my favorite part about MSU is our beauty and safety. As I mentioned before, Bozeman is a really ideal area. Our university's motto is mountains and mines. And I think you can see why in this picture. Mountains are everywhere. And then MSU is very much the center of the community. So it's mountains surrounding all of the mines. Our campus has a really nice balance of older buildings, you know, older prestigious looking brick buildings, also with m very modern facilities. This is our brand new College of Business that I just talked about. So whether a student's looking for a, an older feeling university or a university with modern facilities, we do have both of them at MSU. So any student will be able to enjoy campus and enjoy the facilities that we have. Um, students are very active. Um, our campus is very walkable. Um, walkways so that students don't have to worry about slipping. Um, and we do get 300 days of sunshine. So even though it can be cold and snowy, we do have the um, sunshine at least, which keeps everybody very happy. <laughs> Whether they're going to become a faculty member somewhere or whether they're going to get a job, uh, no matter what, they'll have that preparation. Um, and, and that's what's really special. Our employment rate within one year of graduating is 83%. So eight out of 10 students are able to find a job within just one year of graduating, um, which is very quick. And the student on the top left where it says determined to make a difference, uh, this is one of our favorite students. His name is Chinomso Emmanuel, and he's from Nigeria. He just graduated from our Honors College with, he had a 4.0 GPA, so a perfect grade point average, and he had majors in bioengineering and chemical engineering, as well as minors in mathematics and statistics. So he's just one example of our international students who are coming to MSU and thriving. Uh, they're finding, you know, what they're meant to be studying and just doing so well, um, setting and achieving their goals. So our seven academic colleges have many different majors. There are more than 125 programs that undergraduates can choose from, and then there are more than 70 programs that graduate students can choose from. So there's many different options um, from agriculture, uh, which I mentioned is number four in the United States. Um, then we have College of Arts and Architecture. Um, we do have um, the nation's very first ever Master's in Architecture. So that is an additional one year after completing a bachelor's degree. So in five years, students could have two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's. Um, we have our Jake Jabs College of Business and Entrepreneurship. In this college, students can study marketing, management, finance, and accounting. And then we do have a one-year master's program in accounting as well. So students in five years as well could have a, a bachelor's degree in business as well as a master's in accounting. 
Our College of Business is accredited by the AACSB, so we're considered one of the top 5% of business schools around the world. Our College of Engineering is probably what we're most well known for. Um, just about half of our international, oops, half of our international students at MSU are enrolled in our College of Engineering. Um, there are many different things they can study, everything from chemistry and biochemistry to electrical engineering. Uh, they can even study financial engineering. They can study um, mechanical engineering. There are 11 different types of engineering that they can study. And many of our students do have double majors. So they can pursue industrial engineering and mechanical engineering. That way they can customize their experience. Our College of Education, Health, and Human Development also has many different options. We do have one of the top five ranked internship programs in nutrition. Um, our College of Letters and Sciences is where you can find all of our hard sciences as well as humanities. Um, so those have some of our interesting programs like paleontology and snow science, um, but we're also very known, well known for physics and statistics as well. And then College of Nursing. Uh, so those would be our seven colleges, but then we do also have Gallatin College. Gallatin College refers to the community college on our campus. It does focus more on technical skills as opposed to the um, general curriculum courses that a student would take at a university. Uh, we also have pre-professional programs, so that is where a student could study pre-medicine, pre-dental, pre-law, and these programs will help students prepare to apply to those programs once they complete their bachelor's degrees. And then we do have our honors college as well. That would be for the most prestigious undergraduate students on campus, where they can have um, some special courses offered to them, um, special study abroad experiences um, to enrich their, their time at MSU. So looking at our total enrollment for the current semester where we are, this is for the entire university. So we have 16,440 students. This would be the largest student body Montana State has ever had. So we're very excited that we're a growing university. Um, we are predominantly undergraduates currently, but our graduate school is on the rise. More and more, um, it's increasing every year. So Looking at the entire university, about a quarter of students are in engineering and another quarter of students are in letters and sciences, mostly studying the hard sciences. Uh, you can see, though, that it does shift quite a bit when we look at our international enrollment. So like I mentioned, nearly half of the students are in College of Engineering um, and then followed by the College of Letters and Sciences, um, our College of Business. Um, College of Arts and Architecture and Agriculture. Um, we would love to see some diversity and see, you know, some of those other areas grow a bit, but our international students are doing um, very well and we welcome anybody to any major. Um, for undergraduate students, we don't have specific requirements for a major. So students are accepted into the university regardless of what their major is, so long as they meet the requirements. So the easy steps to be admitted, um, first of all, to complete the application and pay the application fee. Um, the second would be to send in transcripts. We can look at unofficial transcripts for admissions purposes, but we do need to see an official transcript if a student is admitted. We only require a 2.5 GPA on a 4.0 scale for freshmen and a 2.0 on a 4.0 scale for transfer students. And then for proof of English proficiency, um, these would be some of the scores we accept. We do also have an intensive English program on campus called the ACE Language Institute. If a student doesn't quite meet one of these scores but still wants to come to MSU, they can study English before beginning their academic program. Our deadlines are fixed, so every year they're going to be the exact same to make it easier for everybody. So students who want to attend in the fall need to apply. Want to attend in the fall. And those who want to attend in the summer would be. 
I always recommend Obviously, we'll be very happy to receive them at any point. Still very warm. Number of new students begin at the university. Getting time after um, You know, if they come in the spring, we're still looking <laughs> some. Um, so looking at graduate called a decent. This means that every department on campus has their own admission. David and I, a student that wants to apply to any of our graduate programs, email saying who wants to do, um, you know, psychology. What exactly? Know if they have a good chance at getting in, and also um, that be common set of requirements that most programs will have at least with a 3.0 GPA or higher. Very strong application. Um, other than that, English proficiency. Students like to see a GRE score of at least 300. Um, then a statement of purpose, three letters of recommendation, and the application fee. And we're, like I said, we're glad to help you through this process. So a student, you know, will only apply if we think there's a good chance they can get in. So looking at another exciting development that happened just very recently, we were named one of the top 100 best college buys, um, which means that we have a very high quality education at a low cost. So this is a report that comes out every year and we're glad to be back on the list. Um, we do have many different scholarships that we offer to our students. So um, Looking at the undergraduate scholarships, we do have, um, they're typically based on grade point average as well as SAT or ACT scores. So they're based on their academic achievements. The presidential scholarship is the highest scholarship we have for undergraduates. It's for the top applicants. It would be a full tuition waiver along with a stipend per year for students to buy books or to live in an apartment off campus. Um, that does have a separate application other than just to be admitted. Um, however, all of the other scholarships for GPA and SAT scores, students will be automatically awarded those if they qualify. They don't have to do any extra work. Um, students could also apply for what's called the cultural who are made the community. Uh, this would be a great one to recommend to them. And they work in um, centers for the elderly. Um, then looking at the graduate scholarships. waiver so students don't have to pay anything like money who just arrived and not only is her tuition complete around 30 um, to help in one of the research facilities so they can be re really really an undergraduate or a graduate student, the department's scholarships the awarded $750,000 in scholarships to students. All these departments are and help them um, support their studies financially. Figures $90 for undergraduates. And then $25,000. Um, people surprising that your graduate number is lower than your undergraduate number. 
but any credits is undergraduate students. We'll take 15 credits. Graduate students will take either six or nine credits per semester. And it's six credits, but without an assistantship, it's nine credits. So, so when students are paying their tuition, they're not just paying for their classes. Um, the tuition really does go a long way. I know when I'm speaking with students, they're always so concerned, you know, what am I going to get as part of my tuition? So I think this could be really important information you could share with them. Um, it is a good buy. So students, there's um, all sorts of different tutoring centers that are available. So whether it's chemistry, physics, even to the modern languages, English, psychology, whatever their student is studying, there's going to be a tutor available for them on campus that they don't have to pay any extra money for. Um, and then we also have a Center for Student Success on our campus. They help with And they're looking to speak with both undergraduate and graduate students. Um, of those 190, 100 of them were for um, engineering disciplines or computer science disciplines as well. Um, so again, that kind of focus in that realm. But Boeing, Exxon, can provide support, as well as helping and the citations they need. We do have counseling and psychological services, so students can go to 10 free counseling sessions per year. Um, you know, if they're having trouble adjusting, um, you know, if they're um, having trouble coping with college life, or even if it's more serious issues, we have somebody on campus that is happy to help students through their tough times, should they have them. Um, one of the great things is our Leadership Institute on campus. This is open to any student who wants to become a better leader. Um, maybe students who would want to have jobs as managers or CEOs one day, um, if they want to be teachers, any position that requires leadership, they're able to do activities and attend training sessions to help them improve their skills. And then we also have a fitness center on our campus that students can use for free to help keep them healthy. Um, this is our fitness center. And then in the fitness center, we also have outdoor recreation. So they'll offer trips to students to go kayaking on our rivers, to go mountain biking. I know a group of our international students last spring, they took a camping trip for the weekend. And so many of them were so excited because they'd never been camping before. Um, so all sorts of different ways for students to get outside and enjoy their time at MSU. Um, our Office of International Programs, as I mentioned before, we're here to help. That's why we have our jobs, to help your students um, apply, to help them when they're here, and then to help them afterwards with applying for OPT or whatever they want to do for the future. Um, we do provide a free airport pickup to all of our students whenever they're first arriving. So we're there to greet them with a big poster and a smile on our faces and to make sure they get checked into their residence hall or their apartments with no issues. So looking in the Indian students at MSU, uh, we currently have 32 students, um, sorry, 37 students. 
So we have the, mostly, um, there is a really good split, which is nice. Sometimes you see much more, um, you know, one country will have either all grads or all undergrads. Um, one of the best things about our Indian students is that we have a very active Indian Student Association. Um, the president of the organization is a gentleman named Mayank Garg, and he is, um, he worked for our office last spring, but he makes sure that every single Indian student feels welcome at MSU. I know that this past spring, one student came and he forgot to apply for housing, which is okay. We said, you know, we will help you find a place to live. But my uncle took him into his home to help him, you know, so he didn't feel like he didn't have a place to live. Um, so that's a very tight knit group of students. They have many different events every year. So they have India Night, which is a huge celebration. Um, the photo in the top left is our university president. She attends every India Night every year and gives the opening speech. And then students have musical performances. They put on a play last year. They cooked. So it's a great way to share Indian culture um, with the people of Bozeman. They also had celebrations for Holi and Diwali. And at the end of every semester, they have a potluck dinner where everybody brings different food and it's just a big party. I know this is a lot of words and I will send you this presentation so you have it later on. But these are just some of the success stories of our students. Um, the, the lady in the middle, her name is Nirja. She came to MSU as an undergraduate student. She's now getting her PhD. Um, and that's a trend that you really do see here. The students who come for undergrad, they love to stay into their graduate studies. It's kind of place where they form, you know, a big sense of loyalty. Um, on campus housing, we do have 11 different residence halls as well as family and graduate housing. That way, you know, graduate students don't have to live with the freshmen, <laughs> you know, next door to them. Um, if they're coming with their spouses or their children, we do have three and four bedroom apartments for graduate students. And our, all of our dining halls also can be included in housing, so students don't have to pay anything extra to eat on campus. These would just be some of the photos of our residence halls, obviously many different options. We have a free bus system that runs throughout the city. It's called the Streamline Bus. So students can take the Streamline around campus. They can take it to Walmart or to the mall or to downtown to go out to dinner. So they don't have to worry about transportation. It's all free. Um, around campus, though, most students do walk or ride their bike, and some even like to skateboard. So Bozeman itself, you know, we always celebrate the culture of our international students that are here, but we also have a lot of fun cultural events. If you have students that are looking for a place with a lot of community and a lot of celebrations, you could share some of these events with them. So we have an orchestra, which is, you know, kind of common, you can see anywhere. But then we have two things that are really distinct to Montana. So first of all, you can see the photo in the middle is a cowboy riding on their horse. And we do have a rodeo team at MSU. We are the national champions of rodeo. I had never seen rodeo before. I moved to Montana from New York City. We don't have rodeos there, but it's really fun to see people riding their horses, doing these different events. You know, your students can really take advantage of the unique culture of Montana. We also have many different Native American reservations in Montana. So every year we have what's called a powwow, where the different Native American tribes all come together to celebrate their different cultures um, and their communities. And then um, the Gamelan is an Indonesian music group that we have on campus. And if you look closely, you can see that almost none of them are Indonesian. So it's nice that we do have, um, you know, other music from around the world and performances from different cultures. And then we have a lot of bobcat spirit. So if you see the picture, that is our mascot. He is a big bobcat and you can see him walking around campus greeting students. We call him spirit. So it's um, very exciting. He comes to all of our sporting events um, just to get students excited about MSU and to feel that sense of loyalty to the university. 
So this is our contact information. Um, I know um, Abby has my email address, but we'll make sure to get that sent out to all of you. We'll also send out David's um, contact information. Um, this is where anything can be sent, any questions, but we are more than happy to help um, all of you. We, this is um, a great opportunity for your students. I think Bozeman is such a a warm and welcoming place where students do very well. Um, so like I said, we're just, we're glad to help you however we can. So I will, if I can figure out how, I will try to turn my screen back so you can see me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Megan. It was really wonderful webinar and uh, we came to know so many things today. So guys, whatever the questions you have for the Megan, feel free to write it down so that one by one I can ask her. In the meantime, I have some questions for you, Megan, that you mentioned that for the graduate programs, you require the four years of degree um, and 3.0 GPA. Uh, so uh, this is like if the students from India who has finished the three years of degree are not eligible for the master programs in your university. They can be. So typically they say they like to see four years, but we do have many students that are accepted into our graduate programs that come from three-year bachelor's programs. Um, if the graduate department feels that maybe the students are missing a couple classes that they didn't take in their bachelor's program, what they'll do is they'll conditionally admit the student and say, you know, during your first semester at MSU, you'll need to take these three courses to kind of, that way they're caught up, mm -hmm. um, and then they can launch right into their program. So that's typically what you see. Rather than denying the students, they just ask them to come to MSU and take a couple certain courses first, depending on the program. Okay, so it is like uh, some kind of bridge program for those people who have three years of degree, or it's like they get the undergraduate I-20 and they have to study for some credits and then only they can start their MS program. No, they'll, they'll still get their, um, their graduate I-20. It's just that what they'll do is they'll tell the students exactly what courses they want them to take in the first semester. Sometimes it's only one or two courses, and then they can take other program-specific courses at the same time. Um, it just depends on the student, you know, what courses they took in their undergraduate program and what the, their advisor is looking for but they communicate it very clearly in the admissions letter that they send to students. Okay, okay. I have a Kirti from the indoor office and she's asking the question, is SET is mandatory for the undergraduate program? Is what? SET, SET, S-A-T. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, we don't require it, but if a student chooses to submit their scores, it can qualify them for very large scholarships. So currently, our merit-based scholarships that I mentioned before, they start at $3,000, and that would be, um, that's per year, and that would be for a student who doesn't have an SAT score, but they have at least a 3.0 GPA. When students then choose to submit their SAT scores, it adds on to that 3,000. So the maximum scholarship that a student could get for their grade point average plus their SAT score would be $15,000 per year. And I have a couple flyers. I think I might have sent them. I'm not sure, though, but I can make sure to send them to everyone that lists all of our scholarships for undergraduate students, what the requirements are, and what the amounts are. We like to make it very clear for people so they know, you know, if I go to Montana State University, this is the scholarship that I'm going to get. Okay, okay. Uh, the second question asked by the uh, Abby, what are the job opportunities available for the engineering students after the graduation? Sure. So after graduation, there are many opportunities available. Um, we do have several students, I think some of the most noteworthy, who have gone on to work for Boeing afterwards. Um, some will stay on campus and decide to work in some of the research facilities, so to continue working with a faculty member. Um, but that Center for Student Success plays a big role in helping students find what they're looking for. Um, a lot of our alums, so people who have graduated from MSU, will specifically ask for MSU graduates 
be their new employees. Um, so that's where you see the Boeing, you'll see Microsoft for a lot of computer science, computer engineering students. Um, there's a lot of great opportunities um, through the Center for Student Success. Okay, uh, the other question asked uh, by my colleague is that uh, I want to know the business administration requirement for the international students they can apply without GMAT. Sure, so the, the GMAT is not required for our masters in accounting. Um, students can take either the GRE or the GMAT, so they do have an option. Uh, there also is not a minimum required score. So what they like to do is they like to collect the scores from everybody who applies, and then they'll you know compare the the pool of applicants to see which ones have the higher scores, who has the lower scores, and then they'll make their admissions decision. So if a student doesn't want to take the GMAT, they can take the GRE instead. Um, none of those examinations are required for undergraduate studies in business, though. Okay, so you mean to say there is no minimum requirement for GRE or GMAT, but they should appear for the GRE GMAT to get that admission in the uh, business administration? Yeah, I, I recommend for the master's in accounting that students t have like a 300 if they're taking the GRE, um, just because that's a, a good solid score to aim for. But like I said, I've seen students be accepted with lower scores. Um, also, another thing is that if a student does their undergraduate business studies at MSU and then wants to go on to do their master's in accounting, that's a really good way for them to be accepted because the professors know the students. Um, you know, they've, they've formed those connections, they've mentored them during their time in their undergraduate studies, that most students who go to undergraduate studies at MSU then go on and can be accepted to the accounting program. Okay, okay. And is this the same apply for the MBA also? So we, we don't offer an MBA. We only offer the master's in accounting and then the bachelor's in business. Okay, okay, okay. So is the GRE or GMAT is compulsory for all the your master's programs or only the particular engineering programs or some other programs? So it does depend by department who requires the GRE and who does not. I would say most of the departments do require them, um, particularly within the College of Engineering. So computer science, computer engineering, um, industrial engineering, all of those different engineerings along with computer science, they do all require the GRE. Um, outside of that, it does depend on the department. And that's where David and I can help you um, to make sure a student knows exactly what's required. Okay. And what are the programs are the part of the STEM um, in your universities? Sure. So we do have many. I will try to name them, but I'll also send you a list. Um, but within engineering, we have... Um, mechanical engineering, industrial engineering, financial engineering, chemical engineering, bioengineering, um, there's computer engineering, computer science, there is, um, there's like a construction management engineering, um, there's industrial engineering technology, um, there's 11 of them. I think I got all 11, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm not positive. Um, and then we did just receive a, a very large donation for um, an alum named Norm S. Bjornsson, and he has donated $50 million to build a brand new engineering center. It's called the um, Norm S. Bjornsson Innovation Center. So that's where the new, um, all of the engineering programs will be located, our computer science program, also different um, interdisciplinary programs for students um, and they'll all be in that brand new facility. Okay. Um, within the hard sciences, because you, you mentioned STEM, we have um, biochemistry and chemistry, we have um, as the study of infectious diseases and immunology, uh, we have neuroscience, we have molecular biology and cell biology, um, and then we have biological sciences that focuses more on um, 
like looking at like ecology and um, plants and animals. Uh, we have environmental science. Um, we have agricultural economics as well as economics. Um, physics and math are two very um, big programs with us. We have an aerospace science minor. Um, those would be m most of the most of the sciences. Um, I think I got the big ones, but again, I can send you a complete list. Sure, definitely. Uh, I have another question uh, that we have one undergraduate student who have done his statisco, but he does not have any IELTS and TOEFL. So those kind of case, the students has to do the ESL program first before they start their undergraduate program. Yeah, so we do accept many different types of ESL, but if a student really wants to come to the campus first, we do have what's called the ACE Language Institute. So when a student, they can be conditionally admitted to MSU, and then when they arrive to campus, we will have them take a language placement examination, and then they're placed in levels one through six. Six would be the most advanced. When they're in level six, they can they take one academic course at MSU, and then they take English programs as well. So that helps them bridge the gap and helps them transition to their academic program at MSU. And then as soon as they finish level six, um, we just update their status from being an English learner to being a fully enrolled student, and they can begin their academic program. Um, we do accept the TOEFL, the IELTS, um, we accept PTE academic, and then we also accept ITEP scores. So um, different types of tests, you know, because not all students take you know, the certain tests the same way or do well on all tests. So we tried to offer as many examinations as we can. Okay, so you, you mean to say uh, students have to finish first ESL and then only they can start the academics, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as they finish their level six in our English program, then they can go right into their academic program and they'll have the opportunity in the last level of the English program to take one course in their academic program. So to then help them, you know, become more used to being in an American university class setting. Um, rather than just throwing them in, we like to give them that one introductory course. Okay. And this is also uh, the the language school is from the Montana State University only. So they are going to get the I-20 from the uh, language school. Plus they get a condition yeah. letter from the uh, university. Yep, yeah, so we create their I-20s. Um, okay. We will provide the conditional admission letter and we will send them an MSU I-20. Okay, my colleague has mentioned that uh, the student is from Ghana. And I think in your website uh, where you mentioned uh, IELTS and TOEFL requirement, you mentioned the Ghana is a come from those countries where the proficiency can be waived. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So uh, that means that the students are from the, uh, I think around 15 to 20 countries which you mentioned here. Uh, if they come from those countries, they don't have to produce their IELTS and TOEFL. Yes, on our website, I'll, I can send you a link as well. Yeah. We have that, that little box that shows the countries yeah. um, where students don't I'm, have to submit. I'm on the same page, yeah, yeah. You already sent it to me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, one second. Another question come from uh, my colleague. Said students, if they have a good scores in the given exam, I'll show it off. With the good set is going to be on it. Okay, now another question came like this: that if the students is having good set score, can they also get the waiver in the IELTS or TOEFL? Yes, we do. On on that same page that I think you're on right now, there are certain um, SAT writing scores or ACT English scores that they they can be exempt from having to um, take the IELTS or TOEFL. Okay. Okay. It's on that same page that I think you're looking at. Right I guess writing a score. Set a uh, writing a score you mentioned six fifty here. Yes, that that sounds about right. Okay, okay, that's fine. 
uh, you also mentioned that your intake uh, you have the intake in summer also so what are the programs you offer in the summer intake it's all programs in undergraduate and graduate or only the few of the programs so for undergraduate any student can begin in summer um, it's pretty flexible for graduates though um, every program has very specific intakes so some programs will say you know you can begin in the summer or other programs will have a stricter you know you have to begin in the fall semester so we can also provide you with more information about specific programs but undergraduate students can begin their program whenever they'd like um, the course offerings in the summer are a little bit smaller, but they do offer a lot of the general education classes for the students who are just beginning. Okay, so you mean to say that uh, um, undergraduate students, they can start for the summer programs, um, mm -hmm. like in summer intake, but a few of the graduate programs also avail available in the summer? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and sometimes certain like depending on who the student's advisor will be sometimes the advisors say you know i'd love to have you come early you can get started on your research project or you know you can help me with one of my summer courses so the student can also just communicate with their advisor to figure out the appropriate time for them to come to msu um, some professors are a bit more strict where they want students you know by a certain date no, you know, no sooner, no later. Um, so it just depends on who the student would be working with. Okay. Do you also offer some kind of medical program for the uh, for the medical students? So we offer a pre medicine program. So what this means is a student can come in as an undergraduate, as a new freshman, labeled as a pre medicine. And then um, by the time their third year comes, they will declare a major. And then most of our students choose to do microbiology, um, cell biology, or neuroscience, something related to the medical professions. And then we have those um, pre-medicine advisors who then will help students prepare for their um, applications to medical school, help them prepare for their MCATs, so the medical entrance examination, um, and then that's why we have such a high medical school acceptance rate, because we have those advisors that are basically coaches to the students on how to get into medical school. Okay, so you mean to say that initial two years is uh, uh... They do the pre-medical, that is called BS, uh, and then after that they can, uh, either they can continue with the your university or they can transfer to any kind of medical universities in the so, Caribbean. Yeah, so in the U.S., um, you have to have a, a bachelor's degree to go on to medical school, as I'm sure you know, but our, our so the pre-medicine program is just a, um, the first two of four years. So a student, it's not a program that students can graduate from. It's just they can start off their academic time at MSU, say they're not exactly sure what type of medicine they would want to do when they graduate. They could take a couple different courses and then they can declare a major. So it will still take four years, but once they have their bachelor's degree at the end of the four years, then they can apply you know, to medical schools and go on from there. Um, we don't have a medical school in Bozeman, but a lot of our students will apply to medical schools in the neighboring states um, in, and go there after they graduate. Okay, so uh, they, uh, how many uh, years again they have to study for the getting the completing their medical programs there once they finish their four years undergraduate in your universities? Yeah, so most students will complete 120 credits um, at MSU, and then after that, when they have their bachelor's degree, most students will either start applying to medical school when they're in their fourth year at MSU, or some students will you know, apply for OPT for a year after they graduate, and they can work and then work on their applications to medical school as well during that time. It just depends on the student's preference. Okay, so uh, we also, uh, like your professor also helped the students to clear the examination called USMLE um, in their, once they're doing the undergraduate there. 
Yeah, so they'll help coach the students on how to take the MCAT, which is the medical entrance examination. They'll tell the students, you know, these are the subject areas you'll really need to focus on. You should, they'll help tell students what courses they should take. Um, and then they'll even do some test preparation. So go over, you know, practice questions, help the students know what to expect when they're going into the MCAT examination. Um, so they're very much like a coach, helping the student prepare for those examinations. Um, often if a student applies to medical school and, want, and the school is very interested in that student, then um, our um, pre-medicine advisors will help the students prepare for their interviews to be accepted into medical school. So they do everything to prepare the student to hopefully get them accepted to medical school. Okay, I think that's all from our end. We are close to one hour now. And I knew that it's very late nice to you also. Uh, <laughs> you are just awaking and helping Indian is students to get admission in your university so thank you very much for that but uh, absolutely yeah but before i end this call uh, i just want to know that you mentioned about the david that he used to travel uh, to the india and other locations to um, meet with the students and meet with the, the your partners do you have any mm -hmm. 2017 plan to coming down to the india we do actually. Um, David just booked his plane tickets today. Um, he'll be spending, um, and David can't speak so right now, so he can't <laughs> chime in, but for, I believe um, like 17 or 18 days he will be in India. And what we can do is um, let you know what our, our schedule looks like. We're still in the process of booking things, but to let you know what cities we'll be in, so okay. you could tell us where would be best to visit your branches. Yeah, so all together we have to, to schedule a meeting with, you know, at least one of the branches. Sure, like we already have 10 branches in India and, uh, and hopefully that wherever the David is going, we can arrange some kind of meetings there and invite our students to meet with him locally. Also, Absolutely, we would, we can let we would us love know, that. Yeah, also if you can let us know in which month he is coming because we are also planning some kind of education fair in April month. So if it's coming... Okay close by those months he can always join our uh, education fair also if his time is permitted. Oh, that's great. Do you have the education fair um, once a year or twice a year? We do once in a year fair um, and generally we do once the students like we mainly concentrate on uh, recruiting the undergraduate students so till March great. and the undergraduate uh, like school exams uh, go here in India. And uh, most mm -hmm. of the students, they start looking for uh, getting admissions in April month. So our fair is starting from April 2nd to 10th, where we are covering Perfect. mostly the undergraduate schools. Also, we are inviting the Indian schools and the colleges to do the, some kind of MOUs with the, our partner universities. So that oh, we can great. some kind of summer program or exchange program where the students can do 2 plus 2 or 3 plus 1, some chart of that. That's great. That's something that we're very interested in. Um, we recently signed one with Manipal University. Manipal University. Um, where they're, okay. uh -huh. Yeah, they're engineering and architecture and computer science students. We've That's had many transfer to MSU after their, you know, for their second two years of university, years okay. three and four. Yeah. Um, and they've been very successful at MSU. So that's something that we're we're very interested in. He's planning to be in India this February. Okay. Um, so it's coming up soon, but <coughs> what our strategy is we do like to visit India two times per year. Okay. So we try to make one visit in the spring and then another visit in the fall. Okay. Um, so I'm, we were kind of a little bit behind. We're still getting things, um, you know, scheduled for February, but um, we can definitely schedule an office visit with you. And um, sure. I'll speak on behalf of David, <laughs> but we sure. would, you know, love for him to be able to meet with you all and get to know you better. Um, he can bring many brochures and some fun um, materials you can give to students and um, that would be great. And then we can maybe plan more you know, for a fall visit as well. Sure, definitely. So I look forward to receive an email from your end regarding the David visit and we can plan accordingly how we can um, 
how we can invite the students, what kind of activities we can do that together. Perfect. That would be great. And just to confirm, Abby, did you receive the contract that I sent? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I didn't check my email. So Sunday morning I came and I started. No, I sent me, um, via FedEx. Oh, I guess uh, you have sent to the Mumbai office and um, okay. uh, I think they received yesterday and they're going to forward okay. to us. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, just wanted to make sure it made it to you yeah. safely. In okay. that also, I included what we call an academic guide. Okay. So it has an overview of all of our colleges. Um, I included some brochures, so things that you can use in the meantime. Okay. And then David will bring more materials with him when he visits you. Sure, sure, definitely. Thank you very much for your time and good night to you and David. And it was nice speaking with you guys. And Thank you so lot. much. It was so nice getting to meet you as well. And I look forward to getting to know you and you know all of your counselors a lot better in the coming months and um, you know finding students that would be the right fit for MSU and um, who would do really well here. So thanks for yeah. taking time out of your morning and for bearing with us during the technical difficulties. <laughs> sure, no problem. Thank you very much and thanks everybody to join this call. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Take, Take care. care. Bye now. Bye-bye.